Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. I feel like I need something, like... I don't know. Something that's... missing. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. But where? where? And how? And how will I know when I get there? How will I know when I get there? And is there there together? Trying harder isn't the answer. Maybe trying harder isn't the answer. Be still. You are not alone. This is... Maybe it has nothing to do with how smart I do with how smart I am. Maybe just for once. Just for once. I'm not being graded. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. What if it's not about getting it perfect? Getting it perfect. What if it's about awareness? An awareness thing. Realizing that I'm never out of reach. Never. Ever. Never. You're not alone. You're not alone. turn that off we're just about ready to push back no problem looks like i'm gonna get to uh, stretch out a bit on this one huh it's all yours great excuse me did you order the kids meal uh yes we did you know i just got off a flight from boston it was full of a high school soccer club Ooh, i bet that was a noisy flight the inside of the plane looked like a movie theater after kids met night <laughs> i can just imagine what they did with the meals you don't want to know Speaking of which, no lunch for me. I am going to snooze my way to Portland. Okay. Well, then I guess these are for you. Thank you. Daddy, can I get a pillow? Uh, excuse me, can my daughter get a pillow? And a blanket? Sure you can. I'll be right back, but you make sure you buckle up. Oh, goodness. Enjoy the flight, and if there's anything we can do to make your flight more comfortable, don't hesitate to contact one of our flight attendants. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and uh, have a good flight. I like your dog. Oh, What's his no, name? No, no, I'm so, so sorry. Amy, uh, Amy no. Uh, excuse us. Thank you. Dad, what's wrong with her? Not so loud, honey, and don't stare. Oh, this is going to be a great flight. Why, Dad? Why is it going to be great? Never mind. 
Here's your pillow. I'll be right back with your blanket. Excuse me. Could you see if there are any other seats in the back? Why, Dad? What's wrong with these seats? I like these seats. Shh. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Excuse me. Is she buckled up? Oh, yes. That's the first thing she does. She loves to work the seat belt. Here we go! <laughs> Put your arms up, Mama. Who taught you how to do Baba that? Did. Baba did. Papa always puts his arms up. Okay. Up, up, up we go! Up, Papa. Put your oh, arms oh, up. I'm so sorry. She just gets a little excited Papa, on your plane. I love Papa. Oh, Amy, can we be still? That's not Papa. No. Papa's in heaven. In heaven. Papa. I want to see Papa. I'm sorry. She just lost her grandma. He's not lost. He's in heaven. He's the one who always <laughs> took her place. Does he see me now, Mommy? We love to fly together. I want to sit by the window. Amy, Amy, no, Papa, no, I Amy, want to be Papa. Look, look, honey, the seatbelt lights on. Look. Seatbelt on. Seatbelt on. Mom, she's not using her inside voice. You're right, honey. She's not, but don't stare. Here's your blanket. Oh, blanket for oh, Amy no. now. Did you see if there were any other seats in the back? Well, there's just a couple singles. Well, can you move them there? There are two together, sir. <sighs> Look, I don't mean to be a pain, but we're on vacation. Well, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Excuse me. Yes. Can I show you some seating options in the back? All right. Amy, let Mommy put. Amy. Amy, look at Mommy. I need you to sit still. Still. Be a good girl. Good. I'll yeah. be right back. Yeah. Okay. Mommy loves you, honey. Yeah. I, I'll be right back. You hurt your finger? <laughs> I, I can see your bed. Stop it! You miss your grandpa, huh? Papa. Papa! You see him out there? Papa! Ow! Why don't, why don't you sit over here, then you can, you can see out the no, window better. No, no, seatbelt? Yeah. Oh yeah, seatbelt. Can you see Papa? Look, look. Why don't Why don't you sit here? See, the seat the seat has a seat belt too. Oh, Ma Mama sits. Well, no, she can she can sit over there, and then you sit here. You two just switch. Switch. Yeah. I'm, sh I'm sure it'll be okay.
Papa's okay, remember? He's in heaven. He's all right. Papa's tired. Baby's tired. Yeah, I'm tired too. Hey! We just please. This? Yeah, we did it. Well, this just talks about the plane. We weed it. Okay. It says this is a 737. No, weed the story. <laughs> the story. Yeah, weed it. Okay, once there was a plane. Once upon a time. <laughs> okay, once upon a time there was a plane. And this plane's name was Jane. Plane Jane! <laughs> I like it, it's funny. <laughs> And this plane had a bunch of these on it. Do you know what these are? These little squares? Doors. Oh. Can you count them? Yeah. One. One. Two. two three, three. Four. four five, five. Six. Six doors. Six, six doors. Yeah. yeah. And each one of them had one of these little gray rectangles on. You know what those are? Slides. Oh, slides. <laughs> we like slides. But these are special slides, though. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't want to come out unless they really, really have to. So they're kind of secret. Oh, you know? secret. Most of the time, they just they sort of stay tucked in there under the the seats there. Love you, Papa. Amy, honey, we have to get our things. Let's move. We have bad days. I work as an architect. I'm a dean's assistant. Care manager. Electronic technician. Nurse supervisor. I'm a mom of two kids. I own my own uh, painting business. I work two days a week. Well, um, my day. Starts with my kids waking me up. The alarm clock goes off about 5 o'clock. Telling me what they want, uh, giving them what they want. And it's a pretty good day up to that point. My office looks like a mess. It's very noisy. I work out of my house. There's a lot of people in a very small space. And my car. I have paper all over the place. So my car is full of stuff. That's what I have. A lot of mess. I would say today was a real tough day. Many times tonight when I go home, I just drive down the road and I just get wiped out. Today we had an assembly for the seniors which threw off the schedule of the regular school. I was just so emotionally drained over this, this past week, I almost fell asleep driving the car. Get a couple of voicemails, something came up, I need to take care of some issues here. And it's not a physical exhaustion, it's just an emotional exhaustion. That happens two, three times a week. No thank yous, no adults to talk to all day. Do it for about 12 hours and my husband comes home. All of a sudden, now my afternoon schedule that I had planned actually talking with my mom gets thrown thrown to the side. I gotta supply his wants, food on the table, clean clothes. I start feeling stressed and I feel that I have to get control. No thank yous, <laughs> no words of appreciation. And sometimes I don't think, and then people get hurt. I love him dearly. I don't think my mom's very happy. She got put on the back burner right now. 
I have one difficult person I work with, uh, real demanding and wants everything to the to the T. And it's stuff that doesn't seem to matter. We have customers that will call us on a regular basis that are just a pleasure to work with. Then we have some that will call us regularly that it's just a pain in the butt to deal with them. When I get off the phone with a customer who has just really let me have it, I find myself holding that in so I don't take it out on somebody. But unfortunately, it all comes out at home. I have days where I do a service call that's 40 miles away from my office, and I get back, and they call me back and say, your printer's still broken. I teach science. I get quarterly reviews. Oftentimes, I'll get a lot of feedback right after the class period's over. They always start with, oh, you're doing a great job. You no, know, everything from today sucks. But of course, there's room for improvement. To, uh, you know, that was, that was great what we did today. So, I know something's coming. <laughs> Yeah, taxes, paperwork, the workload, problems, and you know, stress, traffic, wrong part, gone a lot of night, sweating the accounts receivable. Spend more time working on my job than spending with her. Meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting. After meeting. Sometimes they all pile up on the same day, and it just gets really frustrating. suggesting that I would do something that I normally wouldn't do or is out of kind of the ordinary. Not every time that I get something that seems like a prompting that I'm to do something turns out to be anything. But I would rather take the risk and step out on a limb like that than wonder later, did I miss an opportunity? We were traveling down a very busy highway when we passed a large billboard, and in the shadow of that light, I saw a man. Immediately after we passed him, I just felt this incredible urge that we were to go back to that man. And uh, Keith obligingly turns around and starts heading back. And all the time he's asking me questions like, was he thumbing? And I said, no. He said, did he look like he was in sort of some sort of trouble? And I said, I couldn't tell. We get back to the fella. He had taken a razor blade and had um, cut both of his wrists. I had no clue what this overwhelming sense that we needed to go back meant. It made no sense to me. I was shocked that I did it. It's really out of character for me. All of a sudden, I sensed a, a prompting or leading to say hello to this woman. Oh, that's silly. I'm not going to do that. Why would God use me? And at first I said no, I resisted that. How would God use me? I don't want to go into that area. That's a crazy thought. There's no way I would do it. She's going to think I'm kind of weird stranger just speaking to her about that. And yet it persisted. persisted. I don't know how to figure out if it's God or just me. When God is leading me to something, it is something that really stays there. Stay. At first, I may just think it's mine, and I will just present it back to God, and then it, it will just stick with me. And then I take a step towards that to see if God affirms it or if God opens the opportunities for that thought or whatever action it is to be continued. I don't want to be the kind of person that hears a leading and blows right by it. I don't know if I've ever had a leading or not. If I have, I've probably missed it. 
Sometimes leadings come and I'm allowed to go to scripture, align it with scripture. Sometimes it is a split second leading that I have to act right now. I just know that if the end result will be bringing glory to God, that it is a leading from the Holy Spirit. There was one morning when I was at the grocery store and I had this real strong sense to pick up these um, like bath soaps and, and fancy bath oils, et cetera, for a neighbor of mine. So I bought a little basket and bought the things and added in the basket, wrote a note, put it on her doorway. The next morning I received a phone call from her. She was in tears. Um, her father was dying of cancer and she had just been at his home was making her hour-long drive about 10 o'clock at night. And she said, Lord, the only thing I can even imagine doing right now is going home and taking a really nice bath. She w drove up her driveway and saw this basket on her front porch, and it blew her away that God would care ahead of time and know what she needed. And that was one of those times when I was so glad that I didn't um, disregard, because that was a real moment for her. and. A, a thrilling moment for me to think I helped set her up for something she needed. When I have the um, confirmation in my spirit that the Lord has used me, it gives greater purpose to my life. Why I'm here, why the Lord doesn't take us on to heaven. He leaves us here to do His work. My wife has type 1 diabetes, she will often experience hypoglycemia during the night. And it can be a very dangerous thing because she can, you know, she can go unconscious, um, you know, to the point where you've got to call 911 to revive her. And I mean, it's, it's just a very serious thing. So anyway, what happened um, after we got married, I would wake up during the night. And it would just so happen that her blood sugar would be low to the point where she was incoherent or whatever. It, it just became apparent that I was being woken up when, the, when she was having, having hypoglycemia during the night. And it still happens today. So it's, it's a thing that now I don't even think about it that much really because it feels so normal. That when, when she has a low blood sugar episode during the night, I will wake up. I mean, it can not happen for weeks and then it can happen three times in a week. And I just think it's God just waking me up. What is really cool about it is that I feel like I was put in her life for a reason. And God, God had all of this um, worked out ahead of time and knew what her need was and put me in that slot. So I, I mean, I feel like I'm being used directly. And I just feel like there's a, a direct link there with God. Personally, just knowing that God has given me leadings and that He is speaking to me makes me feel very significant and important. To, to know that the Creator of the universe, who's watching over all the different things, is using me uh, and, and giving me a word to speak into someone else's life. One of my favorite parts of walking with God truly is knowing at the end of the day that He used me in a tangible way. And it could mean that I heard something or was prompted to pick up something for someone or to write a note, or to make that phone call, or to um, just simply be with somebody in a specific way, and then realize later that that is what God had wanted me to do. It shows me how important I am to God, that He trusts me with those words, He trusts me with that action, and that my act of obedience can have eternal significance. Eternal significance. that I do battle with. These are the voices, are the voices that, that confuse my mind every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day.
first. There's Four. ten new emails. Can, can I get this by noon? Get this by noon. Can I get this by noon? Twenty new emails. Ready for the presentation. We're totally over budget here. What about this last proposal. Oh, about the last proposal. Go, go, let's go. go. Let's go. Let's go. Pick it up. Ah, uh, coffee maker's broken. Fax is broken. Copy machine broken. He told me he would do. Uh, this. sorry, he's uh, out of the office. Out of the office for the next week. Uh, did you hear? Oh, you didn't hear. Oh, didn't hear. He quit. He quit. Oh, I didn't hear. He quit. I never got that voicemail. Never got that voicemail. Expect delays. Then there's TV. Thinner. Taller. More hair. Tim. Lesser. Faster. Faster. Cooler. Bigger. Better. Buy now, pay later. You need this. You deserve more. Come on. You've earned it. You've earned it. Then there's home. Oh, then there's home. I need the bathroom. First. I need the bathroom. I need the bathroom first. Three four cards on the table. Thirty year fix. Six point five. Six point yeah. five, baby. Dad, got it low. Oh. Soccer practice. Soccer practice today. Football. Big game on Sunday. Big game on Sunday. Yeah. Piano yeah. lessons. Violin lessons. Yeah. Lesson tomorrow. You better prep. Do it tomorrow, mom. Just let me go. Oh, you trust me. I'm seventeen. GPA GPA and a half. Stop Beat it. it. Get out. Get out of my room. Stop bugging me. Sleepover. Can I go over to Judy's? I've got to sleep. Vanessa has a sleepover. Jimmy's got a baseball clock. Then we have to get ready. Diane has her piano lesson tomorrow. Johnny's got it. Then we have to get ready. There's the sleepover. I say to myself, "What if I'm not good enough?" I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Why can't I be a better mom? Why can't I be a better dad? I just forget. I gotta get this right. It doesn't seem to work out. I blew it. It's not fair. Again. Why aren't things getting better? I wish I could I just, wish I could make, just it make it all go away. Time I prayed. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I need to do. Okay, what time is it? Oh, nuts! Oprah's on in a few minutes. No, no. I can watch it after I finish praying. Except if 
if you don't see the beginning, you really miss the whole point of what they're talking about. <laughs> Patty, come on. Who's more important here? Okay, I've got a whole ten minutes before she comes on. Okay, here we go. <sighs> Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful day and for all the blessings in my life. My health, my baby, this house. What am I talking about? This house is a mess. Now, when was the last time I cleaned up around me? <laughs> Sorry, Lord. Forget the house. Okay. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful home you've given us. Even though it looks like a pig's pen. Now, how can people live like this? I, I know I can. Clothes all over the place. Bushes from a few nights ago. Toys. <laughs> what am I doing? I can do this later. Here we go. Dear Lord. Thank you for a few moments to myself before Oprah. And thank you for Jim and his new job, his boss that he likes, for all that he does. What am I saying? The man infuriates me. Now, why he won't take a few minutes before he goes to work to rinse his breakfast dishes is beyond me. I mean, I already have one baby to care for. I don't need to. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, I got a little sidetracked. All right. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. I was praying for Jim. Praying that you would forgive his selfishness and insensitivity. And I pray for Jean. Jean? Where in the world did that come from? I haven't thought of her in years. I wonder how she's doing. Oh, I mean, you know I don't give her a call. Let <laughs> me see what she's up to. Sure. Why not? You're. Why not? <laughs> Mother, I... What can I say? I was just letting the spirit lead me. It's probably not very funny. Okay. All right, come on, Patty, you can do this. All right, now this time I'm going to do it. I'm going to get down on my knees and mean business. Dear God, boy, this is uncomfortable. How do people's knees take this? Oh, it's better. Dear God, I pray for Debbie and her husband and that things will work out for them and go smoother for them. Mm. Oh, and I ask that you help Mom to start feeling better. And uh, feel better about herself. Oh, and I ask you to forgive me for being so insensitive to her on the phone. And for Daddy. Oh. <sighs> feel better about life the mom's job everything else <coughs> what was that oh and god i thank you for giving me oh, so many oh so many good friends and Dryer buzzer. Well, better go get. Oh, no, I said I was going to play. And I'm going to do it, even if it kills me. Father, thank you for my good dresses in this load. If I don't get it, it'll be a mess of wrinkles. No. No. No, no, no. Now I said I was going to pray. Okay. Father. Thank you for loving me and being my God. And I just have to get that dress. I can't stand it. 
Amen. serious this was even with my closest friends. Here I am trying to learn not to be in a hurry. And I'm in a hurry to learn not to be in a hurry. I think I have been living the myth that someday things will settle down. My whole relationship with God is something that I've set up where I know what needs to be done, I get assignments, and I do them. The environment that I grew up in, there was this need to measure up. How do I do stuff to please God? I need to be perfect. I felt like I always needed to be doing something. I do that in my job as a consultant. I learned how to do scripture memory when I was very little. I do that in my marriage. I learned how to do Bible study. I do that for my friends. I was leading small groups. Recently, I've been learning a lot about grace. It was the perfection that pleased God. But still, understanding grace has been something to do. One of the things that's been significant for me is discovering the difference between training uh, and trying. It's a transformation of, of, of your daily routine. It's a substantially different approach. Trying to go to the health club on a regular basis and trying to understand all of that equipment there uh, without having any training is really pointless. Since I'm a new Christian, I expected everything to just happen. And I was concerned because it wasn't, didn't just happen. I'm not all of a sudden loving. So that was very important to me to learn that I need to train. You can try and try and try, but if you don't have the training to go with it, it's going to be very frustrating. My family and I were driving back from a play that my daughter had been in, and uh, we wanted to stop for a cup of coffee. We go to this coffee shop, and uh, there's a line. So we were standing there in line. There's myself, my wife, another woman, and a guy in a wheelchair in the front of the line. Part of the problem with this gentleman is he had trouble speaking, and he had a, some kind of a device on his wheelchair where he would type in the letters, and they would actually kind of come up on a screen. And the guy behind the counter could not understand quite what he was asking for. I was watching the woman in front of us, and uh, she was very impatient. And, and I could see her. I could see her, just her body language, her face. And I noticed that, and I thought, you know, well, what's her deal? And it was a realization, that's a mirror for me. When I am not a loving person, that's a really good sign that I'm not spending an ordinary day with Jesus. School's in session right now, and I get a chance to learn something right here, right now, waiting for a cup of coffee. It wasn't until I really understood the concept of belief, desire, and decision that God was able to get into my life and help me overcome that addiction. It's very hard for me to talk about it, and really the only person that knew how serious it really was was my therapist. A particular one for me was an addiction to chocolate. And it sounds like a silly thing, but it was very serious in my life because it affected my health a lot. I guess I didn't really have the belief that God was enough on my side, that he wanted to come into my life and help me make the changes that he and I both wanted for me. One night I came home rather late and all I could wait to do was get into bed. But before I did that, I wanted to peek in on my three children and give them all a kiss on the cheek. My daughter sat bolt upright in bed and said, Mom, I don't feel well. And in my head, I'm like, this is really not what I want to be doing right now. We got in the bathroom, and she threw up all over. And I'm still thinking, this is, shouldn't be happening because I want to go to bed. Something drastic changed. Well, my therapist asked me, why, you know, last week were you eating it, and this week you're not? I said, because I finally realized that God loves me. And I believe 
that God loves me. What I had recently learned was that we can take those moments to God. Here was an opportunity to help my daughter understand what it's like to go to sleep in Jesus' name. Finding Jesus in my life every time I came to that moment of decision was part of being aware that he was there, first of all, and stopping long enough to kind of hold his hand. I have hooey sickness. I'm not sure I even realized how hurried I was. This morning, I deliberately chose to try to go under the free limit, and I failed miserably. I would realize I was rushing through the routine in the morning. It's like, I'm not late. I remember one morning I was eating my breakfast and I knew I had to go somewhere, but I had enough time that I could have sat at the table and ate it. But I was standing at the counter, just shoveling it in and trying to make the lunches at the same time. And I thought, I am really hurried and I don't need to be. Yesterday, I was uh, in a hurry and a lane opened up. This is a perfect opportunity. Be right by everybody else, and what happened right in front of me comes out a motorcycle. If I'd been just a little bit faster, I would have gone, and he would be dead right now. I am learning about the difference between being busy, which is inevitable, and having a hurried spirit. One of the phrases that kept coming back to me was, ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. <laughs> and that has just been repeated in my head. If I slow down a little bit, I think I'll, my connection with God will be better. When I'm living that fast, it's harder to hear God's voice. There's been times when I am going about my everyday that I'll get leadings that will happen in the moment. While I was on a flight returning back from Europe, as I'm standing in line for the washroom, a woman comes up behind me. All of a sudden, I sense a prompting or leading to say hello to this woman. But I thought, no. And yet, it persisted. And so finally, when our eyes met, I realized this was the window. And so I acknowledged her and asked, you know, I couldn't help but notice the elderly gentleman you were well, all of a sudden, she turned and just gave you this full story. Yes, he was her 91-year-old father. They had just been to Poland and had buried her 83-year-old mother. And now they were bringing him back to live out the remaining few years of his life. I just had a moment there to say to her, that is an amazing gift that you are giving to him. A lot of times, it's through that person, they'll say, that's exactly what I needed to hear. Then she said, well, thank you for saying that. We've been unsure about this whole move. A prompting came up and affirming in my heart. It just simply, the voice said, good. You have been obedient to this particular moment. I've learned a lot on how to do service and learned a lot about those doing parts of relating with God. But that's not really how I connect with God. The concept of a spiritual pathway was new. Spiritual pathways is about how do I tap into not my power, not my knowledge, not my wisdom, but God's power. The surprise came in that I'm such an extroverted person. My spiritual pathway is actually contemplative. One of the things I've been learning about myself is God wired me up to really love to be in nature. One of the pathways for me has always been relationships. It kind of gave me permission to garden, for example. I grew up as a deaf child, a real healing aid, and I was very lonely as a child. It's a spiritual activity for me to get out in the yard and dig in the dirt or plant things and to do that by myself. If I'm going to meet Jesus in the everyday, I need to somehow build those things in, not just in vacation time, not just in times that are convenient, but how can I find something like that every day? Recently, I had this solitude time. It was this amazing spring day. 
the trees were just especially green and the flowers were especially pink and and I felt for the first time that Jesus all he wanted to tell me was that he loved me and I kept waiting to get instructions and instead it was just that he wanted me to believe that he loved me when my husband was pursuing me and he kept telling me that he loved me and I was like why why would you love me God is that same way that he is just I'm never gonna leave I don't this is the way I am I'm always going to chase after you Instead of seeing God as my judge and my disciplinarian and that person that just says, here's your assignment, go for it. I'm seeing the Bible as God's written me all these amazing love letters. What I do for God really isn't as important as how I do it. It's not just my spiritual life in one little corner of my life, but that every part of my day can be a way to connect with God. God is with me every single minute of the day. So now I think of God and I'm like, oh, what, what, how can we just spend more time together? Having a relationship versus just practicing a religion has made it possible to experience an extraordinary life.